All right, here we go. Back again. We are making bacon. Best thing ever. Normally I make bacon. You can make it in a frying pan. It's, um, usually people do it. I prefer the oven. It is so much cleaner. Less mess. Comes out crispy and it's fine. Yes, frying pan's great too, but again, when you're making an entire pound, go with the oven. Just easier. This is a half sheet pan. We'll fit a pound of bacon, regular cut bacon. However, I find the, I don't know what size this is, but it's a little bigger than a half sheet pan and it fits a pound much better. I like the heavy duty foil on the inside. Keeps the pan clean. Just sort of. You could use a second pan and just mold it in, but I'm just gonna do this by hand. Make sure you get the corners down. Hold one side over, boom. Little sides. This side. Done. All right. Set up, ready to go. Oven's preheated to 400 degrees. There we go, 400, perfect. Get to the bacon. Kirkland, Costco brand bacon. Nothing wrong with it. It's fine. All these mainstream bacons, unless you're getting something like from a butcher that's really smoked, it's all the same. So I recommend going which one has the best value. And to be honest, you can't beat value when you're talking about Costco. And it's quality stuff for the most part. So there you go. I think this is like $15 for four pounds. I dare you to find that even close to that in the supermarket unless it's on sale. And a lot of times it's not. So there you go. The, open the package up. What do we got here? There we go. I said in previous videos, plastic wrap down, keeps the counter clean. Less mess. Let's get baconing. All right. Get your hand under here. It's packed quite tightly. That's okay. Try not to. It's difficult, but try not to stretch the bacon out as much as possible. I like to go, and then when you pull it, because it's so fatty, it tends to stretch. You want to save the stretch. I like to interlock them, so put like that fat side here, put this fat side this way. You'll fit more in the pan. It'll pack tighter. Again, this won't matter once it's all pretty much done, because it all shrinks down. The fat renders, and you get... It doesn't really make a difference, but this is the OCD craziness in me that insists on doing it this way. So, deal. Deal with it. You may have to go back and overlap this stuff a little bit to make it fit, but that's okay. You could use a rack, like a steel wire rack, however, which I guess would promote crispening per se because it's more, it allows airflow around it. You could also use a silicone mat or silicone, one of those silicone pyramid shaped raised thingies. Uh, all that stuff's well and good, but to be honest with you, put it right in the pan, get the oven hot. It'll crisp up just fine. It'll fry in its own fat. How what the hell's better than that? To be honest, there we go. Boom, boom, fit this on. that actually this is all kind of uniform shape at this point this isn't a, sometimes you get bacon that's really wide on one side and then real thin on the other so you want to do the alternate method alternating method but <clears throat> this one is pretty uniform for the most part so we get to the end here we just sort of make it work again none of this has to be perfect because it really doesn't make a difference this will all be rendered down to smaller pieces. This bacon is going to be cooked crisp, like all the way. I know some people, <coughs> Zios, likes their bacon like baby food. Not in this family. Although the woman likes it like that too. It's weird. I prefer crisp bacon. Uh, this is garbage as the plastic wrap. So, bacon's there. Let me just quickly get the grease off. Then we merely pop this in the oven at 400 degrees. I usually flip in about 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes, but uh, here we go. We'll be back for that. We'll put a, I'll do this one. 
kitchen timer. Bam. Ten minutes. Start. All right. Be back in ten. And bacon is ten minutes in. Cancel that. Take a look. Ah, yes, we get some raw undercooked. Oh, we spin your pan. Undercooked bacon. We flip. A normal person would grab tongs and do this. I like to just lift it and do it. Kind of start losing feeling in your fingers after a certain point of working near a pizza oven. Not to say it doesn't burn, but you just kind of, the feeling kind of just goes. Flip, flip, yeah. flip. Less to clean this way also. I like your fingers. In case you haven't noticed up to this point in these videos, I like to do the thing that involves the least amount of cleaning. Because after cleaning, after cooking, cleaning is like the shittiest thing. So if you can minimize that at all costs, minimize that. Well, at most costs. All right. This is definitely going to take another 10 minutes, maybe even a little more. I'll just bring you back when it's actually done to the point that I like it. I'll let you know. Well, let's go with the kitchen timer. We'll check it in 10, but I'll just come back when they're done. Start. Peace. Okay, so 10 minutes is up again right now, and uh, I'm not going to say it's done yet, because I wanted a little bit more, but I figured I'd show you real quick after 20 minutes what this all looks like. So some people, this is what I'm talking about, some people will call this done, but not me. I wouldn't call this done. I need this bacon to be a little more crisp for what I'm going to be doing with it, plus I just like it crisp anyway. Don't have any uses for soft bacon. Now, what you could do to make more even cooking is take the outer pieces which are going to be crispier and swap them with the inner pieces if you feel like going that crazy with this there you go perfect maybe this one looks a little more done pop it with this one flip it again doesn't really matter at this point because we're almost done but there go and then Always outside in, inside out. There we go. Yeah, we're almost done with this stuff. Yeah, I'll say we'll leave the rest of the other. I would call this another maybe five minutes tops for the rest, for this to be finished. And this time for real, I'll just bring you back when I would call this done. I'll let you know what the total cook time is. So I'm gonna put a kitchen timer for five minutes. That failed miserably. Okay. Start that, and uh, I'll bring it back when it's actually done, and what I do with it afterwards. Okay. Okie dokie. Another five minutes is just about up, which is now. So now a total 25 minutes cook time. This is definitely going to be done to what I'm looking for, and yeah, we're looking good. Now, at this point, you're gonna when I pick it up, it's gonna like not seem crisp yet, but based on its color, it will certainly be crisp when you when you uh, let it cool. That's what I'm looking for. You put this down on a some paper towel. I know some people put it on a rack. Once again, in the end, less to clean. Less to clean. That's always the goal. Alternated. Where are we? Here we go. Beautiful. That looks good. Another layer. I'm putting three in between. That's crazy, more than enough. But uh, you can do whatever you want. This will actually fit this way. So I will complete the whole thing this way. Beautiful. Yeah, this is going to be great. Nice crisp. You can now eat. You can save for something else, which I actually will be in this particular instance, but anywho. Here we go, almost done. Alright. The last piece is always going to be saved for, uh, you know, sampling, obviously. 
two sheets for the top. Put that cool here. What I like to do to save this is to just, uh, you know I'll come back when it's time to really wrap it up once it's cool, whatever you're not gonna eat. I'll show you what I do, keep it nice and, no, well, keeps it good. Uh, also, another note, I want to sit like right here just until I'm ready to eat that, let that cool a second. Okay. Um, a note, I have plenty of this, I'm not saving it this time, but the grease or bacon fat and the rendered fat in this fan, pan, I would recommend saving this if you don't have any in your fridge, you should always keep some bacon grease in your fridge, great to cook with. I'll demonstrate because I have in my fridge, because who doesn't have bacon grease in their fridge? There we go, rendered bacon grease. Oh. Mm. Great. Instead of butter in your eggs, hell, when you make a steak, anything, anything you gotta saute, instead of putting a little butter, or you can put butter too, but instead of using oil, you can use bacon fat. High smoke point, tastes great, adds a great flavor. But yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna toss this fat because again, I have a container in the fridge already. Uh, I'll come back when we're done, when we're wrapping this, to wrap this up, and that'll conclude everything, I guess. Peace. All right, so just to wrap up the baconing, we got plastic wrap here, clean paper towel. Here's how I wrap it up real quick. Nice, as you can see, came out nice and crisp. Just perfect. I'll take it, do a fold, put another one, do a fold, and so on until you fill up a sheet of paper towel. I guess that's about four pieces in a sheet. Yeah, we'll call that done. Do that, fold it over, and boom. That's a package of bacon. I tore off way more plastic wrap than I needed for this, but that's okay. And just uh, give it a quick wrapping. Note to self, less plastic wrap on the next one. So there's one, plenty. Repeat real quick. One. You get like out of a pound of bacon. I ate a piece before, but you should get about a, I would say three pieces of, definitely three pieces of a paper towel. Just squeeze that in there, you'll be fine. Good enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's just literally, literally there to absorb any excess. Grease, keep it fresh, keep it comes out, well it'll be a little bit soft when you take it out of the fridge after a little bit, but um, honestly at that point you can crisp it up easily. And the last one, here we go, should all fit, if you were saving all of it that is, which I am, I'm using it for something else later on down the road, video to come. Final piece is going right here. Okay. Um. Got three nice bottles of bacon. Ready to go whenever you need it. Thank you very much. Enjoy.